Hi, it's John Kelly. Happy holidays, and thanks for watching this video. And I wanted to record some things here that would give you and your athlete, your family, some specific actions you can take from some really clear and powerful concepts to really make a difference in improving your athlete's confidence. You know, in a game as hard as fast pitch, and I see it almost every day on the field as a game coach, and I work with so many athletes nationwide as a private consultant, um, it's, it is very prevalent that kids, particularly adolescent uh, athletes, have an issue with confidence. It's a game that many say is built on failure, and as a result, your athlete's ability to have the mental tools to be able to bounce back and have that resiliency they need to play their best on a consistent basis is the goal. If your athlete is at a showcase level, I can tell you, talking to dozens and dozens of college coaches over the course of the year, that they're looking for consistency. That's the word I always hear is, yeah, I like her, but you know, she's not consistent. And almost nine out of ten times, that lack of consistency, and I have that with my own athletes on the field, stems from their inability to mentally have the coping mechanisms, the tools, to be able to boost their confidence and uh, bounce back from the inevitable mistakes and challenges they're going to face on the field. So, let's get right to it. I want to say, first and foremost, the most important thing that an athlete must strive for to be successful on the diamond is to make good decisions, right? Softball is the game of making good decisions, whether you're a pitcher, you're a batter, you're a catcher, you're a fielder, you're a base runner, any defender on the field. It's about making good decisions. And so often, in a game that's very fast, uh, at a 14, 15, 16-year-old level on up, the batter's got less than a half a second to decide the pitch velocity, the location as far as is the ball got movement in, out, up, down, and where they're going to place the barrel of the bat and the ball. Less than a half a second. And so the ability to make a decision and have the conviction to make that decision has got to be present. What I see all too often when players do uh, exhibit that lack of consistency, I, I see doubt. Doubt in their decision making. Doubt in not having the conviction to make a decision on defense. They hold the ball. They don't quite know where to go with the ball. They're afraid of making a play because they're afraid of making a mistake. As a batter, they're afraid of swinging the bat sometimes on a borderline pitch or a pitch you're not comfortable hitting. And sometimes the result is uh, they don't have a very good at bat. Pitchers sometimes don't have conviction and doubt uh, throwing a certain pitch in a certain count against a certain batter in a certain part of the game, right? They want to shake off the sign, and they're not comfortable throwing that pitch. So all that boils down to uh, a mental stigma, a mental challenge, a mental roadblock that causes athletes to have doubt and indecision, which makes their decision-making not very good and makes, of course, their performance at best a roller coaster ride and at worst consistently below their potential. So that out of the way, what can you tell your athlete specifically and work with her on, whether you're a coach or a parent or both, in order to help them to have less doubt and by definition cause and effect, make better decisions that will allow them to achieve more consistent success on the diamond? Well, the first is a willingness to fail. So many athletes I work with, they're wired, their DNA, the way they're programmed, they're very hard on themselves. If they're not a perfectionist, maybe they're someone that's an internal, a thinker, someone that constantly judges, analyzes, strategizes, and these kids normally have the hardest time with this game because they're constantly trying to outthink the situation. And the challenge of that is, in this game, you can't play your best unless you can be in that present moment and can summon that focus. So part of that is that I see all too often, again, back to the indecision, the lack of confidence, the lack of, of conviction to make a decision on the field, and hesitation caused by doubt, is an unwillingness to fail. And sometimes if a child has that personality where they really don't want to fail and it causes huge disruptions in 
uh, in terms of uh, being embarrassed, in terms of feelings of letting their teammates down, feeling of inferiority, uh, feeling that they are a failure. They would rather not take an action that would cause them to fail than take an action that would cause them to succeed. We'll get into that in a later video, but for now, you need to help your athlete to push through that comfort zone. Do you see so often as I do, maybe your athlete is in this category, she looks really good in practice or looks good with her hitting coach or pitching coach, and she gets in a game and you don't see the same level of performance. I see it all the time. It's always caused by mental. It's always caused by typically a fear, a worry of not being able to succeed. And sometimes that means, you know, going from a comfort zone, which practice all too often is, to an uncomfortable place, which could be the game, or it could be a bigger game or a bigger moment in the game, a bigger at bat, whether you're a hitter or a pitcher, a bigger time in the game on defense with a winning run on base. All these things really will unmask how much mental toughness and how much confidence your athlete really has to be able to succeed when it matters most. And these are the moments that a college coach, or even if you're looking to get on a better travel team or your high school team, where the coach is looking for those kids who will step up in those situations. And so you have to sometimes push your athlete out of their comfort zone. And what I find every time when I get my athletes to push through that comfort zone, they find that when they get on the other side to the new comfort zone that looked very uncomfortable, it wasn't as bad as they thought. So what I'm saying is it's important for your athlete to learn to be comfortable while being uncomfortable. That may seem kind of a weird thing to say, but that's what we have to do. Get them to push through those barriers that they put on themselves. Because ultimately, what it gets back down to is their thought process and their beliefs. If their beliefs are they can't do something, they're not sure they're going to do something, and the thought patterns surrounding that, particularly in a big game situation, support that belief, meaning that their thoughts are bombarding their head about, I can't do this, I'm not sure I can do this. And then they don't have success, and that real-life result reinforces their thinking they can't do something. So, again, it's all cause and effect between beliefs, thoughts, and the way you feel the emotions. And so it's important to understand that if you can push them through that comfort zone to get on the other side, they'll realize it wasn't that bad. Now, how do you do that? Well, it's important to make that focus for them and for you as a parent or coach to not be on the results because kids who are thinkers, who are perfectionists, those kids who are always analyzing, judging, pushing themselves where no result is good enough, and you know what I'm talking about if that's your kid or your team, they will be in a state of perpetual frustration in this game. The game will not be fun for them and not for you. How do we make that change? Slowly but surely get them to focus away from just the results and the outcome and get them to focus on the process and their effort. The things they have control over. In this game, so many things they don't have control over. Get them to focus on things they have control over. And the biggest one is their effort. Give more effort. Getting out of that comfort zone and pushing through, diving for a ball you didn't think you, you, you could do without getting hurt. Making that pitch in a tough situation. Throwing that 2-0 change up to a number four hitter with the base loaded. Maybe, maybe, maybe they hit it out of the park. Okay. That's how we learn. Right? But for a lot of kids, the result defines who they are. They're a success, they're a failure. They let people down. They let themselves down. The game becomes hard, and yet no player that ever played the game nor will ever play the game in the future has ever been perfect. Here's something you can try on your kids that I do with every athlete I work with one-on-one. -on -one. If they're a hitter, ask them if you get 10 at bats during the course of a weekend. How many hits, not hitting the ball or being safe on airs, how many clean hits in her mind would she have to get out of 10 for her to consider herself to be a success? Now you'll find, as I have found, maybe the answer is 3 to 4 to 5. That's pretty healthy to think, well, I get 4 hits or 5 hits, that's a pretty good weekend for me. Absolutely. The average hitter, depending on what level your, your, your daughter is playing at, Probably anywhere from 350 to 450 is probably the best average out there. Maybe you're playing at a lower level. You might hit 500, 600. If you're a slapper, you'll get higher. But I find kids oftentimes just say, well, i got to get 10 out of 10 hits or 8 out of 10 at bats get a hit. Now, if, you're out, if your athlete responds with that number, you know she's a perfectionist 
and she's going to be harder on herself than most people, and thus it's going to be harder for her to move beyond the disappointments and the challenges a game uh, throws at her during the course of a weekend or a season. The other question, if your athlete is a pitcher, is ask her, if you're going to throw 80 pitches in a game, how many of those pitches have to be strikes for you to consider yourself to be successful that game? Again, you'll be surprised. A good performance for a pitcher is probably 60% strike to walk, so a strike to ball ratio. So 80 pitches, roughly 50 strikes would be a healthy answer. I've had kids tell me 70, 75, 80 pitches out of 80 being strikes. If you're getting that kind of response, understand it's been very hard for her to ever achieve that consistent level of success because she's going to be so hard on herself and expecting such results, such a high magnitude, it's virtually impossible for her to ever achieve those. Thus, she's always going to be in a state of frustration. And the key is in this game is your athlete's going to play in relation to how she feels. The better she feels, the better she'll play. And so the goal is to get her in a better feeling place about herself, a better emotional state. So the real key in this, in this video is for you to build her confidence by starting to get her to look at a mistake on the field as a challenge and an opportunity to get better, to focus her on the process of getting better. So I tell all my athletes to master a very difficult game. You've got to climb a lot of stairs to get there, sometimes thousands of stairs. And in that process of mastery, you got to take two steps back some days instead of taking two steps forward. That's how it works. It works when you're learning how to walk, learning how to ride a bike, learning to do anything as far as mastery. So I want you to start to focus her thinking on what can we do to get better. So a mistake in a game, a failure as they may call it, I don't call it that, but if they call it that, Let's look after the game, and as I say, the game will always give her a report card of how she did. Did she do better in things she worked on the previous week? And if so, pat herself on the back, get a better grade on that. But there are always things in her game she'll need to work on, and these are the things that when they happen on the field, those mistakes, if she looks at it as, oh, I suck, or I fail, or I can't do this, she'll be less inclined to want to go out next week and work on it, because she'll say, what's the point? I can't do this. Uh, and that's never going to get her to reach her potential or play on a consistent basis very well. If you can start shifting her, and for some kids, DNA-wise, that'll take some doing. If you can shift her focus away from results and the outcome only, start to think about the process and her effort, then little by little she'll look at that mistake as, oh, okay, I'm going to go work on that next week and get better. The game taught me something today that I need to go work on. I'm glad I made the mistake. Now I know what I need to work on, right? Totally different mindset, but that's the mindset she needs to adopt to really build that rock-solid confidence so she can get knocked down, she can experience game adversity, and be resilient and get back up again. Hopefully I, I gave you some key points here you will remember and be able to teach your athlete. While I'm on this, because so many kids out there are in that thinker mindset, their DNA is about results and about always in high judgment mode. I want to let you know again, I do work with a number of athletes nationwide. I am available. What, what I have uh, developed is my mental edge uh, coaching program where I can really help an athlete to shift the way she thinks, shift her beliefs, shift the way she feels, teach her ways to manage her emotions so she can play higher to her potential and do it on a more consistent basis. Uh, right now on the screen should be my email address. If you want to talk about it, I'm willing to have a free consultation with you to explain my program and find out what challenges your athlete may face. As the next pitcher at the Division I level in college, I work with a lot of pitchers. It's a tough position on the field. Uh, it's really a tough position emotionally on the field, a lot of pressure. Uh, happy to talk to you about any concerns your athlete has. Again, this is John Kelly. Thanks a lot for watching. Happy holidays.